many rich people don't even like to think about, okay, what could go wrong? <laughs> Tell me about you. you. Know, people say that yeah. you, you, that now you're calling something to mm. to you. Yeah. But if you are someone who's a visionary and a proper planner, you know those things do happen. And you're strategic. And you're very strategic yeah. around. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Smarter Tomorrow podcast. I'm your host, Susan Wanjiku. Today, we are having a conversation that's very close to my heart, um, something I'm very excited to talk about, and that is how to create a winning legacy. I'm joined by our guest, Nyindo from mm -hmm. Le Risk Africa. Yes. Please introduce yourself. Tell us a bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, thank you for that, Susan. And it's a pleasure being here with you today. My name is Nyindo Tairo, and I'm very passionate about the protection and preservation of family wealth. And we do this through our outfit called Le Risk Africa, which help people come up with winning legacy planning, especially along, around the protection and preservation of wealth so that we can help families pass down wealth from one generation to another. And we do this because we are also very passionate about continuity planning. We have seen how families grow their wealth, yeah. but do not pass it down from one generation to another mm. in a very well manner. Yeah? yeah, And it's it's one of those conversations that are very important to have because it's something we don't like thinking about. We, we only focus on the growing of the wealth, but we don't necessarily think about the protection and the distribution of that wealth. Wow. And you know, when it comes to wealth management, there's very different, there's different aspects. There's actually three main pillars of wealth management. Mm -hmm. There's the creation of the wealth, which is what people love and yeah. focus on, the investment, the savings. Mm. And then there's the protection of that wealth. Because, it, and if you care about something and you're growing it, it's very mm. important for you to protect it because life does happen. So risk management is very, very important. And then also there's the distribution. How do I pass this wealth effectively from one generation to, to another. another. I love yes. that. Create, mm -hmm. protect, yes. and then distribute. distribute. Yes. I've Perfect. noticed that you've been mentioning the word wealth a lot, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. one would think, okay, I thought it's just, you know, rich people also do this. Mm -hmm. I, I do know that there is such a thing as a wealthy mindset. Um, I talk to people a lot. Like, um, I, I start from the basics, in, yes. in uh, you know, in my work. Mm -hmm. And we start by looking at, you know, how... The basics of personal finance, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm really, really trying just to empower people to yes. do the simple basics of budgeting and investing. Mm -hmm. So that we can first of all come from poor, <laughs> you know, to me mi middle yes, class, yes. hopefully yes. to rich and wealthy. Mm -hmm. But I'm 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 very curious. I know what like a scarcity mindset looks yes. like. I know what like a broke mindset mm -hmm. looks like. But I'd really like to hear. I've had you mention the word wealth quite a bit. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the difference between like someone with a rich mindset? Mm -hmm. and someone who has like a wealth mindset. mindset. Yeah. Okay, that's a very good question, Susan. So let's start with um, what we wealth is very multifaceted. Uh -huh. And when we, let me give you a, the difference between wealth and rich, and then now we're going to go into the difference, especially when it comes to mindset. Okay. So rich, most of the time, people just focus on the money aspect. Like, mm -hmm. I'm out here to just make and create this money. Mm. But wealth, there's different aspect of wealth. Mm. There is there's the money part, the financial wealth. Mm. There is social wealth. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Because the, this is where now status come, comes in. You have mm. to ask yourself, Susan, does your name open or close doors? <laughs> Yeah. Please don't give me pressure. <laughs> <laughs> don't give me pressure. Yes, because that's, that's yeah. powerful. Exactly. Yeah. So there's that, and then there is physical health, mm. wealth. By the mm. way, the part people do not think about because even if I have all the money in the world and I am not okay, yeah. I will not enjoy it. That's true. Right. Yeah. And there's time wealth mm. because I can have all the money mm. in the world and I don't have time to actually enjoy it. Yeah. So if you call yourself wealth, you better have the four. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You better have the money. Mm. Mm -hmm. You have the time. Yeah. You're physically okay. Wow. And also the social aspect. The of social it. aspect. R of yeah. It. Rich, yeah. we only focus on the money. The so money only. Yeah. So someone can be rich from the money perspective, mm. but all these others are closed. So if I'm make, making all this money, but I don't have time for myself, I don't even have time to take a holiday. What, what is, is the it point? For? What is it what for? What is the point? Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And then when we come to the mindset, 
wealth is very long term focused yeah, yeah that's true we don't think about just what is going to happen tomorrow i think about okay what could happen in a year five years am i planning that long term so m- wealthy people are very visionary mm-hmm. you just don't think about tomorrow so in comes to rich mindset it's not that long term like okay how can i make money for now and enjoy myself for now yeah, yeah. yeah. and then when the wealthy are also very strategic in how they plan their finances mm-hmm. they are very very intentional yeah you can know how your money comes in goes out but that's why i say wealth is a mindset it's not necessarily just the it's amount of money it's how much money you mm-hmm. have and and i i think that's one of the things i had to learn yeah. because of course when you're coming up and you know like we are in our 30s yes. you feel like at some point like you wonder at what point will i refer to myself yes, as wealthy, as wealthy? Yes. and it's like is it when i'm a millionaire mm. you hit the millionaire so is it when i'm a billionaire yes. like what is and i think one of the things i've had to change my mindsets mm-hmm. around is that and i love that you mentioned yes. the multifacetedness of it mm-hmm. right that like I, i for me time freedom yes so important is so so important, so important. like for me money is is you know like a means to an end and yes. the end is like i want to be free i do not want to like i mean eventually the goal is yeah. to work because it's optional not I mean, because it's mandatory yes. right yeah. and and I, and i love that you've mentioned that yes. it's a mindset so you can yes. have a wealthy person mindset exactly. before you get to the billions in yes. your bank account exactly so yeah. there's the things that you could do now right. because you are cultivating that mindset yeah. because the thing is that if you can manage the money you have right mm. now you can be able to see how you can still create time the money mm. and also like be very careful about how it is that you are showing up socially sure. eventually even as you get all that money you've yeah. already been in that space yeah. another aspect of wealth mm. yeah is they're very very serious about risk management mm-hmm. yeah because we all know that you know life is seasonal there is ups and it's down yeah. so if you are a visionary you have to know that there's a time that there could be a down mm-hmm. so at what point do you actually now plan so it's very important to prepare as of today it's i like to call it reactive versus proactive so mm-hmm. proactive planning means that i it's like i can't foresee that something could possibly happen it might happen it might not but i rather prepare anyway yeah. compared to okay something has happened now i'm start i start running around you're where panicking. Do I even, i'm panicking yeah. so when you are when you have a rich mindset it means that i plan you know that's just the way we talk about having an emergency having your insurances because you know life happens yeah. and i don't want it to affect my wealth mm. yeah that's mm. why i say you're very protective of the things that you're growing that's true yeah that's true so the risk management is very important so many rich people don't even like to think about okay what could go wrong <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about you it. Know, people say that yeah. you, you, that now you're calling something mm. to to you. Yeah. But if you are someone who's a visionary and a proper planner, you know those things do happen. And you're strategic. And you're very strategic yeah. around yeah. it. And then also wealthy people have multiple streams of income. Preach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you just don't look at just maybe your salary only. Yeah. You have to look at okay, how can I actually make put this amount of money in an investment to work for to me to work for me mm-hmm. yeah because now remember ultimately what you're looking for is that time freedom that's true eventually yeah, yeah. and so, and yes. with time freedom mm. there's no such thing as if you if you if you if if you just have one source of income mm-hmm. you will work until the day you die unfortunately exactly. because and especially if it's like a salary because there's also like a time frame like when you hit 60 65 yeah. you're no longer employable or pensionable exactly. right so um now yeah One of the things I love to tell my clients yes. when I'm working with people because again we are to, we are all about money and you know wealth creation for me to get to wealth it's something that I find to be quite simple the strategy to get there but not easy so I kind of like try to break it down for like someone who really just wants to understand no really what does it take to be wealthy right and I broke it down into three very simple steps right make money mm-hmm. keep money mm-hmm. then multiply money yes very and important generally and then now obviously with our conversation today because mm-hmm. you want to kind of like um you know preserve that money yes. because legacies are yeah. all about money that outlives you exactly or investments yes. that outlive you and right? what you're saying is very true because yeah. another part of a wealthy mindset yeah. is 
the wealthy think about how will this money be distributed. Exactly. Because most yeah. people, actually most African families don't even like to think about having a will. Okay, yeah. how will this money yeah. pass on to my kids? Mm. This is how you find so many people fighting over something that you've worked so hard for. It's, it's, I, I, think it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's one of the things, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, to um, come to you shortly yes. with regards to that. But before we get into like, how yeah. do we pass down this world? Mm. Um, again, as I was saying, making money, mm -hmm. keeping money, multiplying yes. money and now we've added you know understanding how to protect and then finally distribute yes. that money so i feel that it's very important sometimes I, I i used to wonder like what does it take to actually get to that point where someone refers to you mm -hmm. as wealthy mm -hmm. but then you see you can't invest money you don't have so you have to start by making that money yeah. as you said at looking at your sources of mm -hmm. income uh, whether you have salary income business mm -hmm. income investment income and then now obviously keeping money is the saving as yeah. you mentioned saving for your medical medical insurance, mm -hmm. saving for your emergency fund yes. and all that. But then we also understand that you can't save your way to wealth. No, you cannot. You must, <laughs> you have you to must, just, must, must. I think that have, thing, yeah, that's how, it that's bothered me. Way. It bothered yes. me for a very long time because yeah. I was like, I was very risk averse, yes. right? Yes. So um, I want to leave my money in the bank, mm -hmm. hopefully maybe in a circle even. Yes. Like worst case scenario, my Um, But then you come to understand mm -hmm. that if you want to get to wealth, mm -hmm you must put your money to work for you. Yeah. You must invest. Mm -hmm. And this investment must compensate you for inflation. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you know, exactly. create that wealth. Yes. So maybe you can tell us, you know, when when you're advising your clients and you're talking to us about like now, mm -hmm. how do you start? I, I want us to focus on the protecting that mm -hmm. wealth and then also distributing and passing it down. Because for me to create a winning mm -hmm. legacy, um, even as a young person right now, yeah. I, I, I have dependence still, yes, yes. right? So passing down, how do I ensure that I protect my wealth? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is I've been able to accumulate in investments, maybe real estate, mm -hmm. maybe bonds, maybe your simple money market funds, yes. maybe even money in a bank account. Yes. How, what are some of the strategies that you can, you know, you recommend or you give to your clients in yeah. terms very quickly? How yeah. do we protect this wealth mm -hmm. so that it can last long enough mm -hmm. to actually be distributed? Awesome. Thank yeah. you. So I'll talk about myself first mm -hmm. and then we'll go deeper into now what it is that I tell my clients. But it's more or less what I tell myself as, as well. well yeah. So you see, I also have um, like a wealth strategy. So yes, I am investing. Mm -hmm. We've already spoken about that. But now yeah. when it comes to protecting, mm. I have to look at my family dynamic. Mm -hmm. I have young children. Mm -hmm. I have people who depend on me. Yeah. So when it comes to protection, I have to have a liquidity plan because life does happen and I do not want in any way mm -hmm. my investments to be touched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that means that number one, I have an insurance portfolio. Oh, wow. So my insurance portfolio consists of my life insurance mm -hmm. because if today I was to pass or um, get a critical illness or a disability, I want to make sure that my children, uh, the, the wealth is still contained for my children, mm. right? Because Like what, it didn't all go to like... Yeah. Pain for your illness. Exactly. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because, you know, sometimes even when someone dies, it takes a while maybe even to liquidate that amount of money. That's or sometimes true. people have to sell it very quickly. Yeah. So I'm like, that is not my portion. Mm -hmm. Or even when you hear people who've gotten cancer or a stroke. So you have to sell everything that you've built. So you can oh, imagine yes. you've been building this wealth for the last 15 years. Then it's wiped out by only one illness. Yeah, I actually read somewhere... Yeah that most African families yes. are one illness away from financial bankruptcy. Imagine that. That's that is, scary. That is very scary. Yeah. yeah so mm. I have that, the life insurance. And I also have medical cover mm. um, just in case um, of a medical unforeseen emergency. Yeah. And also have an emergency fund so that now in the case of a small emergency, mm -hmm. I don't have to liquidate any of my like investments. Like long-term investments. Yeah, because a protection plan or a risk management plan is more or less almost like a continuity plan. Mm. Even in the case life happens and it creates instant liquidity. So you never have to touch your investments. Because you know a, a lot about investments, Susan. Mm. So investments are um, very, very long-term. And sometimes if you liquidate it prematurely, you lose the you money. Lose money. So it means your wealth, get wealth, get rich plan is mm. just disappears like I that. I hear yeah. you. So that's yeah. like what you would call the first layer of protection. Yes. At least an emergency fund yes, for an unforeseen. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, your medical cover. That yes, is self-explanatory. There's no other and way around it. And if you have dependence or you, would, you wouldn't you would want your people to struggle in court and yes. whatever, 
you have at least a bare minimum um, health insurance. Exactly. So that's like our first layer of protection. Yeah. Is there anything yes. else we need so, to do? So the other thing now I still do, I had to write a will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We are having that conversation, guys. I know. We are. Mm -hmm. um, I have a will because... Would you mind I, me asking how yes. old you are? I'm 33. Guys, this is yeah. a 33-year-old beautiful woman <laughs> who has a will. And yet, uh, some of us still feel like we are too, you know. Have you ever... Let me, let me just uh, pause for a minute. Yes. Is it just Africans yeah. or is it just the people around me? Because <laughs> I honestly believe that yes. sometimes when you have these conversations with mm. maybe even our parents, for example, um, it almost kind of like looks like, are you yes. ready for me to go? Right. Like, why are you asking me whether uh, I have a will, I have a plan? Like, mm. are you tired of me? Mm. Like, what is it about our mindset? One of the things, mm. obviously, uh, I know we are really improving. Yes. Honestly, I have to give... Our, uh, us our flowers mm -hmm. before like some of these conversations were completely taboo mm -hmm. um, and I think we're really improving yeah. in terms of one having money conversations mm -hmm. um, even some of us are even like roping in our mm -hmm. our older siblings mm -hmm. our older parents our friends yeah. our, our you know people in our circles mm -hmm. um and I feel like we are talking more yes. about money yes, and about are. investing, right? Mm -hmm. But one of the things I still feel yes. there's that we there's there's still so much room for improvement is you know someone would look at you and be like, and I, I don't know if you'd mind telling us like yes. why do you feel the need or the importance as a thirty year old mm -hmm. person yeah. to have a will and to have a plan <sighs> as young yes. as you are? So, Susan, I have gone through like the craziest time in my life. Yeah. So I lost a husband before mm. and he died yeah. and he died without a will. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when people think that, oh, when you have a will, it's like you're calling death. I was like, he didn't have a will. So what happened? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So as for me, because they also never thought I was going to make it. Mm. My thoughts were we had nothing written down. Who is the person who's going to take care of our kids? So all yeah. the wealth that we have gathered uh, in our years of marriage, we just have now gone to the courts yeah. for someone to decide. So to me, that yeah. like just, you know, it was a light bulb, you know, Moments. moment. So it's just like, because, mm -hmm. you know, the thing is that most people think that this is for older people, but life happens literally to anybody, yeah. right? Yeah. You could literally be, I mean, you you lost your husband in your 20s or 30s? No, he was I was 30. Oh, yeah, still in your 30s. So yeah. just recently. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. No, and, okay. and And we think... These things happen to old people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nobody ever thinks nobody that's ever, yeah. thought it was ever going to happen and to me. And nobody ever did. starts a family thinking, yeah. I'm going to lose my husband or my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, in the near future, you're thinking, oh, mm. our kids will be grown. Yeah. They'll be independent yes. and exactly. all that. But I mean, life is not fixed on stone. I mean, yeah, yeah that is very true. Mm. So... The thing is that I have now a conviction that I want to be in every part of this wealth journey. Yeah. I want to be there for the creation. As in, I'm working so hard. Mm -hmm. I'm waking up every single morning to go to work. Yeah. And I am protecting. But why should I not have a say on how it's going to be passed? Yeah. So I, yeah. Want, I don't want the courts to make a decision for me. Yeah. Yeah, or I mean, we had relatives, you know, how it can go in this, exactly. uh, uh, the African culture. Yeah. So I think our biggest problem is cultural and religion. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> because from a, a cultural aspect, you, you see the way you, when you talk to your parents and you talk to them about a will, they're like, I, a panda. So, so you, you're calling death. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Or if you tell yeah. someone to get a life insurance, right? Mm. So. The culture, uh, the, the culture affects, affects mm. but I'm like that. We have to be able to pick what parts of culture help us and which do not. Do not. And mm. then also from a religious point of view, people think that you don't have faith <laughs> when you overplan. <laughs> when you overplan, <laughs> but I mean, even if you have a house and you're building a house of your dreams, you want to tell me you're not going to put security guard and a fence just because yeah. you know that God is going to be taking care of it. You also have to play a part. Mm. Yeah, wealth management is all these three aspects, so you have to be involved in every single yeah, part of it yeah yeah so to me that was very important that's why i have a will and then now the next stage is where now i want to have a trust because when you have a trust it's easier um, transition of mm. wealth and it does not go through probate so what that means is that it will never go through court yeah yeah so and you don't have to air private. all your dirty uh, laundry I mean, for, you know in yes. courts for everyone to, exactly. to hear i hear you um one of the things i've also found that really affects people mm. um whether you're young or old i think it's the notion that that 
uh, pl legacy planning in itself is an expensive affair. I remember the first time I sat down with you yes. on a personal <laughs> level and, yeah. you know, you were helping me figure out, you know, how to structure like my insurances yes. and how to structure like my, you know, what a will should look like and the prices. Yeah. I was perturbed. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. this is actually, it's doable, it's, it's, doable, it's accessible, yeah. Yeah. it's not like a rich people mm -mm. thing no, it's to not. do. It's so, um, and, and I, I, I really love that now we are having, um, if you talk to the right person, yes. like I know Larissa Caprica does that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, if you talk to the right people, mm. you realize that on the bare minimum, these three levels of protection mm. that we've discussed mm -hmm. are actually right. accessible. Yes, at so any level of at income. At any level I mean, of income, yeah, right? So yeah. I, you, you, you mentioned, and just uh, as I summarize, we have um, the first layer, Mm -hmm. which is emergency funds, mm -hmm. your medical insurance, and the life insurance. Then we have a second layer. Mm -hmm. Ensure you have a form of like an yeah. estate will yes, or an, a estate like plan, a, yeah. an estate plan or a will. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, at the, the very trust. high level, yes. you know, at least a trust and all that. Now, exactly. um, I'd also like to um, discuss something else. Obviously, for people to be able to do some of these things, mm -hmm. right, you need to probably engage a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You need to engage someone to help you with wealth management. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that you would advise someone to look for mm -hmm. when you're looking for individuals? Because trust, <laughs> let me tell you, um, I know, trust I know. is an issue. Yeah. And also just knowing that you're working with a professional yes. and someone who won't like mess you mm -hmm. up. So if I'm looking for someone to help me with wealth management, mm -hmm. estate planning, what should I be looking for? Okay, so when you're getting started, the, you can, you know, ask for referrals mm. if there's someone who you know already has got these services before. Yeah. But what is very important is to see how this person engages you. Do they ask you questions? Mm. Because, you know, just the way when you go to a doctor, you can imagine going to the doctor and then they just say, take Panadol. They've not even asked you anything. They've not checked you. Yeah. And then they just tell you, you know, mm. um, I just look at you and I think this is what you need to do. Mm. So it's very important to have someone who actually cares. And you'll know someone who cares through the questions they ask, uh -huh. number one. Yeah. Just see how engaging it is that they are. Mm. Because with the questions they ask, you can to some extent know if these people are knowledgeable or yeah. not. And number two, it will be important even for you to do some sort of research so that you also have questions to ask. To ask So them. that you see how is it that they're handling these questions. Mm. Yeah. Another thing, you could also ask for their qualifications. That's because big. anybody could call could themselves wake up a financial advisor. <laughs> so I can wake up one day and just tell you I can guys. just wake up. You know, exactly. Especially now in the era of the internet, you can be anything yeah, you want that's to true. be. That's true. Yeah. And mm. then you can just ask someone, okay, um, you, you see, as I said, you'll see how it is that they're asking the question. You can ask them if they've dealt with a dynamic like yours before. Mm. You know, nowadays you have different family dynamics from single parent, blended families, mm. traditional families. Mm. Then you start asking, okay, have you, do you have experience with this yeah sometimes you could get maybe someone from a trusted institution maybe yeah. that is already yeah. uh, maybe licensed to mm. be on the safe side mm. yeah mm. but those are at least a very good place to start but it all starts with you being a, a, a person who is also a bit knowledgeable to some extent because yeah. you if you don't know what to ask, it is exactly. going to be very, very hard. Exactly. And then also, some, I also say go with your gut. Mm. Sometimes you can sit with someone like... Mm, mm, the mm, first mm, meeting. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you remember, like if you're you. getting someone who's advising, because remember, wealth is a very important aspect of our lives. That's true. So you have to make sure that you get it right. Mm. Just the way you get a therapist or a doctor who works for you, just eventually maybe also do a bit of interviews of different wealth managers mm. and settle with the one who you're most comfortable with. Yeah. Yes. Do you know, today morning I was actually uh, writing a newsletter for my subscribers. <laughs> yes. And one of the things that we were addressing, we were like talking about money mindset. And one of the things we were addressing is like, you know, how to overcome that difficulty in like having money conversations, right? Yeah. And one of the things that crossed my mind this morning was how absolutely ridiculous it is mm -hmm. that like money is one of those things that mm -hmm. I can name very few things mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. that don't require yeah, money. It's true. That don't require me to have a level of financial mm -hmm. ability or exactly. even stability. Mm -hmm. But then don't you find it funny how, as you, I, I had you mention a yes. therapist, yes. doctors, like we pay stylists. I mean, imagine. We pay makeup right? artists. Exactly. We pay uh, even people to help us with meal prep. Mm -hmm. Look at it even at the very basic level. Yes. We pay house helps, ETC. Yeah. Like, 
But then you see all of those things, mm. you probably like, you know how to cook, mm. but you still hire someone to yes. help you cook. Yeah. You probably were taught how to clean your house, mm. but you get someone to help mm. you. But then you see, even in our own education system, yeah. sadly, I do not recall a time I sat in a formal class like in school and I was taught how to budget. No. I was never taught how to like manage debt. Mm -mm. I was never taught about how to handle things like yeah. credit cards, mobile loans. Mm -hmm. No one taught me about yes. like investing, mm -hmm. saving, inflation. Imagine. I'm literally like I became an adult and I was just <laughs> like, hit you just from everywhere. You know, you're bombarded. Yeah. But I find it so absolutely ridiculous yeah. that when someone presents um, you know, these solutions, like mm -hmm. for example, get a finance coach, I mean, work with a wealth management yes. firm or get a wealth manager. Mm -hmm. That's where we draw the line. Exactly. It's, I also find it extremely weird, but I don't know if it's that um, Kenyan, is it Kenyan thing or an African thing? People do not like to pay for these services. Yeah. I think sometimes because people keep their money extremely private. Private, you exactly. See, that's why I'm like, yeah. um, if you go to the doctor and you keep these things private, how, you, how will you how get to better? Say, how to say, <laughs> so just think of your wealth managers yeah. and all this yeah. money um, coaches as people who are going to help you come out from because if you are thinking about it already it means yeah. that you believe that you are at a place where mm. you're not comfortable or yeah. you're not happy with mm. so when you go to this person it's like a money doctor exactly yeah. exactly and and the other thing is that I, my background is in finance. Mm -hmm. I did a bachelor's of economics and finance. Mm -hmm. I've done CIFA. I've mm -hmm. worked in an investment company. And to date, mm -hmm. there are things I still am I'm learning, learning yeah. about. Like every time I sit down with you, yes. I learn something new. Yeah. Every time I sit with another, like say wealth manager or mm -hmm. someone who's like well-versed in these areas, like no one is a monopoly it's true. of information. Yeah. So I think one of the things I love to tell people, and I truly strongly believe that in my heart, is that an investment investment in financial literacy mm -hmm. like is the best it's, investment yeah. you it can ever make the best it dividends, pays you honestly. the best return yeah. it pays you the best dividend because you see some of these mistakes are expensive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you so, can say that again <laughs> so much more expensive than that yeah. the fee than the yes. fee i would pay for example mm -hmm. to sit with an advisor yes. or a wealth manager or yeah. someone to help me with mm -hmm. my estate planning mm -hmm. um yeah. and i think that's one of the things i'm encouraging if you're watching us today and you're listening to this conversation that we have and you find it insightful mm -hmm. but then you're like, where do I get these services? Mm -hmm. Where do I get some of these products? And, mm -hmm. you know, where where do I even start? Mm -hmm. I have zero idea of where to start. We have our guest here who is yeah. very well versed with things, yeah. um, you know, regarding uh, legacy planning, estate planning. Mm -hmm. But also SBM Bank, mm -hmm. for example, have mm -hmm. this amazing uh, product, the SBM Elite Proposition, where they actually guarantee, number one, that you're going to have a dedicated and an available wealth manager mm -hmm. to help you figure out like your investment choices. How do I do gold-based investing? How do I invest in alignment with my risk appetite, mm -hmm. in alignment with what are some of the things that I would like to achieve for myself? There are a myriad of resources. And if you are interested, for instance, in where do I start, check the show notes for today's episode and we'll have very many uh, useful resources for you to look at so that you can actually have a starting point. The most important bit, guys, is to start. Yeah. And as you keep like trying to figure these things mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. trust me, you get direction and you get all the help mm -hmm. that you need. Yeah, I and love that. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Marianne, so please yeah. um, give us your parting shot. Like if, yeah. if if you were to maybe leave us with three most important things that we need to have in mind, if we yeah. intend to build wealth, grow it and distribute yeah. it, what are the three most absolute like things that you, mm. you your holy grail, okay. like this one, never forget it. Yeah. yeah. So you always have to remember wealth is a mindset and it can start even before you actually touch the money. Yeah. So it's just how it is that you feel around wealth mm. and wealth mindset is around abundance. You have to remember that this world is very, very abundant mm. and you just have to put yourself out there, yeah. right? So it all starts in the mind. mind. Everybody, it starts in the mind because yeah. sometimes um, you might be able to touch this money, but if you still have a poverty mentality, you lose you, you, it. You lose it. Yeah. I always say you get to the level of your mindset. Mm. It's like, I always give an example like um, a bottle of water yeah. if it's 500 ml even if it rains and it floods i can only get 500 ml 
in that bottle. That's true. Yeah. If so that's have, yeah. the capacity. Exactly. Yeah. So number two is for you to build yourself up so mm. you can build that capacity. Mm. So now maybe you can be a one liter bottle so you can capture a bit more wealth. Yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. So it's very important to remember wealth is a mindset. Please, please put your money in self growth yeah. especially when it comes to matters money it mm. will save you so much mm. and lastly make sure that you look into all the different aspects of wealth from the protection preservation and creation yeah. so with that you'll go very very far oh wow yes. thank you this has been so so insightful yes. where can we reach you okay. are you on the socials yes. tell us where to find you so you can find me at le risk africa um on instagram facebook and you can also check out our website we have very, very good, especially when it comes to now the preservation and protection of wealth. So all the wealth you're creating, we can help you and guide you along the preservation and protection and also legacy planning because actually that is what we are really, really good at. Thank yeah. you so much. Guys, yeah. there you have it. <laughs> In order to create a winning legacy, the most important thing is to focus on all the facets of wealth. Mm -hmm. And that is creation of the mm -hmm. wealth, protecting of the wealth, and distribution of the wealth. Yeah. And as a part in short, I'll remind you guys, I keep saying this and I'll forever keep saying it, that application makes all the difference all the time. So the financial literacy that will actually benefit you is not what you have in your head, it's not what you have in your notebooks, it's actually what you apply. So I'm going to challenge you today. Look at the very bare minimum. We've mm -hmm. talked about the three levels of protection protecting your wealth, identify a starting point and make sure that you apply. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I will see you on the next episode. <laughs>